Hello everyone and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 where I just got the Coronado Mooney Ovation because it was on sale and I intend to test it. Now, I don't have an actual real life Mooney Ovation and there are people who do and could tell you whether it flies realistically or not. I am just going to tell you whether I would fly it around the world, <laughs> which is basically I'm looking for a plane to do that in that uh, that first of all does not have a glass cockpit. That's that's a very important thing to me that I don't want a glass cockpit and I would like something that's fast to be honest and I do have the MB339 which is foremost in the running right now but I was gonna give this a try now we're at Moscow and it turns out that I have picked the worst possible day to fly at Moscow I'm gonna fly in this weather for a bit and see but I might turn off the live weather in a little bit because it might be intolerable so outside it looks like this I guess it's I don't I don't think it's actually snowing right now but it seems very stormy it's very low set the plane very low to the ground it's very interesting and of course the tail is unique well it's a moony thing anyway uh, I'll take it from out here for the first try. So it breaks off. So that's the exterior sound. Getting a sense of ground handling. And off it goes. That's easy enough. I do want to check out its performance to see if it's going to be fast enough. So the reason I'm at Moscow is because I wanted to see updates to the uh, Derzweki scenery. And so we're going to have to head towards that direction. Let's see. I've let go of the stick. It seems to be rolling further to the left here. But I think that might be the wind. And of course this is the propeller torque, so I'll do some adjustments. Very eerie right now, we can see the lights casting themselves on the clouds. And I think I frosted over, I need the, yeah, Pito heat. There we go. Uh, we might need some more heat. The window is frosting over too. Yep, we're frosted over. I'm not entirely sure there's any sort of defrosting like that. I'll continue to look. An interesting flickering of the backgrounds on the on the autopilot altitude setting. Uh, it really does want to roll left. So that has been a thing. I can't see Moscow at all. It is very nimble. Panel lights. Do with some of that. Panel glitter shield brightness. Okay. Well, that looks better. The lights work. Well, the mixture is changing the engine gas temperature. Okay, I get this distinct feeling that we're never gonna see Moscow like this, so... No more live weather. Scattered clouds will do. Jeez. There's Moscow. And we're going much faster now. I'm at 50% throttle. Reduce RPM a bit. Still going pretty fast. Just thawing out here. Now this can't go high enough to take advantage of like jet stream or anything like that. That would be handy. That's one definite advantage to the MB339. It can go fast and high. But this has roominess. It can carry passengers and everything. 
could do some useful stuff, like if I wanted to use uh, one of those programs, like Neofly is one of those, where I could do jobs and such. So I guess this is their business center. And that's Moscow State University over there. Yeah, it seems like it's better on the roll outside of the weather, as you might expect. I was told that the new version of Derzweki Designs' uh, Moscow Landmarks puts back the default version of the church here. And indeed, that looks like the shinier one. Yep, so that's nice. Good times. Still have that really tall tower in the back there. And of course the Kremlin. Okay. No, we're not going to land in Red Square this time. This time I am going to try and see if I can actually get to the airport that I am targeting. But I want to go high up first. Let's see about climb performance here. So, there is a sort of iPad thing if we click here for controlling the static elements, external power, toolbar, pilot, co-pilot. Uh, will the co-pilot to up here? No, I think it's on the outside only. Doesn't matter. And then startup options. Too bad they don't have a checklist though. If they had a checklist there, that'd be nice. Of course, we have a checklist thing up here now. Let's see. Oh, nope, no checklist. They don't have a built-in checklist yet. Oh, well, that should be a thing that they do, shouldn't it? Well, that's pretty nice. Uh, let's take off the HUD elements here. Yep. About the HUD elements, this is looking pretty good. I'll also get rid of my cursor. We're pretty far out from Moscow right now. Can't see too much. We have clearly defrosted. Doing looks very good. So that's a plus. Upholstery looks pretty good too. A little bit worn. I don't particularly like my pilot self, mind you, but it's better than nothing. Looks pretty legit. Do not open above 132 knots. Maybe you also specify heights, <laughs> as it would be bad to open it right now too, I think. Though, I don't... well, it must be pressurized since we can go up to 20,000 feet. I wonder where the pressurization system is. So, I think I should test the... autopilot. Let's see, so it's going to turn to the heading hold selector, and I'm going to change that. Okay, yeah, it's going towards the heading hold selector, alright. It doesn't appear to have uh, touched the altitude at all, so let me see, since it's wonky. Whatever, 17,200 is fine by me. Arm. Whole vertical speed, all right. Right. Twelve hundred should be fine. Okay. 
All right, so it seems like we've got a good setting on the uh, autopilot. This isn't doing anything weird, so that's nice. Taking a look outside, we should, yep, we are over the airport that I was intending to land at. A little bit fuzzy. It could be rendering that a little bit better. Well, oxygen, there's an oxygen off and on switch there. I think we should have blacked out by now. So I think pressurization is not functioning. It's not a functional system. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> Uh, actually, uh, so the fuel selector is just left and right. There's no both. So let's go to right right now. It'd be funny if uh, finally somebody implemented the breakers. <laughs> That'd be uh, special. Okay, well, we have arrived at 17,000 feet. It is leveling out. And it's frosty again. Looks much frostier uh, from the inside than it does on the outside, actually. I want to see the peak ground speed that we get. I don't get any sense that we've got wind helping us here. This thing, let's see. Gallons to destination? I feel like that's not right. Gallons reserve? Uh, hours, minutes, endurance. Okay, three hours, 14 minutes. Uh, well, we're going 182 ground speed in knots and 137 indicated. Well, we're actually going slower now. I think we've hit a cloud and it's slowing us down. Okay. I think uh, I understand the performance of this now. Let's see if we can do some sort of descent here. So I'm going to turn north first. Okay, we are descending. Really frosty. Well, I know there have been autopilot issues, but as far as my normal usage is concerned, it seems to be fine. There are more complicated autopilot functions, but I tend not to do those very much. Maybe I should have gone with some color, some livery that matched the frost. I don't know, this is sort of a frosty livery, blue and white. Maybe it's appropriate. No indication that all the icing affects our performance. So yeah, I would have been fine with the stock Beechcraft Bonanza and flying that around if it wasn't a glass cockpit. I, I want my gauges. So this is nicer overall. The glass cockpits, they have, they seem a little bit too artificial. I mean, like, uh, I have in X Plane 11 the Flight Factor 757, and it has a glass cockpit, you know. I mean, it's not like the G1000 or anything, but um, the displays, the way they're lit, makes it a little, makes them look a little bit more realistic. Um, there's sort of a very flat lighting to these, I feel, and especially the G1000 displays. That I'm not a big fan of. There's another airfield that we're flying over right now, UUBW, huh? UUBW, there we are. Defrosting again and looking good. The arrow keys don't move my point of view. Thought they used to do that. There's the airfield again. We'll come around. I 
think they've the the photo scenery of the runway actually has a plane printed on it or is that an actual plane on it uh, I think it's moving I think it's it's a uh, plane there runway 14 huh the terminal looks good actually okay we are taking it off of autopilot Okay, we can take a look through the back window at the airport. Oh, does it have air brakes actually? It does. It has those little nets that some of these sports kind of, sporty kind of planes do. It has the little net ones. Okay, whoa, that plunges us down quite a lot. Okay. Well, that drops our speed well enough that we can lower landing gear. And some flaps. We should be able to close that up. Alright. Okay, turning to the runway. I don't know, I feel like I'm low, but the Pappy lights are all white. Interesting. Well, I'm pretty sure I am low, so I don't think those pappy lights are working properly. I think they'll show white no matter what happens. I think those are fake pappy lights. Yep. Okay, gently, gently, alright, and down we are. Well, the engine didn't randomly quit on me, that's good, even though I throttled down pretty deeply. from outside. Uh, uh, no, I'm missing the taxiway. Uh, okay, ground handling is pretty good actually. Probably too good, maybe. Whoa, see? Whoa, skid, skid. Nope. No wheel sounds when I do that. That's a little bit sad. Uh, I'll go this way. Let's take a look at the airport. I didn't notice a whole lot of propeller torque outside of the blizzard, incidentally. There's no indication that this engine overheats. I pushed it pretty hard. That's an interesting livery. There's a really pointy nose on that. Oh, it disappeared. Cheats. <laughs> oh, it's back. Okay, anyway. Well, with that, that's the Mooney ovation. Oh, God, it's trucks. Yep. It's got crazy ground handling. And it doesn't have any sounds that indicate skidding. That's my one observation right now. Alright, so with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.